Okay, here we're going to look at the transformation and genetic material discovery process and a couple of the key scientists and experiments that they did to kind of discover uh, that DNA was a genetic coding of the material that cells use. So starting with the Griffith experiment here that occurred in around 1928, uh, he discovered that transformation, this concept of transformation, which is going to be an important concept not only uh, for this lecture series, but also when we get to biotechnology. His experiment demonstrated that bacteria get DNA through a process called transformation. So exactly what is this and what process is this? And we still use it today. So the very basics of what transformation is, is it's defined as a gene from a bacteria cell is moved to another bacteria cell. Here we have an example. We have a blue bacteria and a green bacteria. Now the blue bacteria here produces something that we find desirable or we want that this green bacteria to be able to produce. Now it could be that this lives in a conditions that are just not conducive to something and the green bacteria here is an area that we find uh, we need to find or fill a niche. So we can transform this green bacteria. We use a plasmid. Remember from prokaryotes which bacteria are? They contain plasmids which are small circular DNA. We can take the gene of interest from this cell here and we can splice it into the plasmid. That plasmid then can be inserted back into the original cell, and that cell can then be transformed, meaning this cell here is now producing uh, the substance that this cell was originally producing. We've transformed this bacteria into now kind of a merger of the two. We've got the structure of the green bacteria, but the uh, producing qualities of this blue circular bacteria. And this is through the plasmid. The process of the second bacteria cell taking up the, ju the new genetic material, this is what's called transformation. Now to go into this in more detail, uh, I have a pretty detailed explanation provided here. However, the process is still the same. We have an initial cell here. In this case, our gene of interest is the small yellow region. We're inserting that into our rectangular blue cell. Here it's taking up that gene of interest, putting it into its plasmid, and replicating it here. So we could see the different phases that it's gone through, and now this cell now has, or able to have the same genetics, produce the same proteins, the same end result as this cell originally. We've transformed this bacteria, is what the process is called. Another explanation here, it doesn't have to be a cell-to-cell -cell transfer, we could purify plasmid DNA. And in here we have a test tube with plasmid DNA. We can insert that into a cell and then grow it out. In this case, our, the genes expressed by the bacteria could be antibiotic resistance for selecting for certain uh, bacteria colonies is important. Uh, also, this occurs in nature in general sense when we're looking at uh, genetic and antibiotic resistance developing within a gene pool of bacteria. Okay, the Griffith experiment. Uh, a bacterium existed two strains. He studied two strains here. He studied the S and the R strain. The S strain here is smooth. Key part here is this can cause disease and death in animals. The rough strain here is harmless and doesn't produce um, qualities that make it any um, reason for concern for animals. Animals can survive just fine with the R strain. That's what we call harmless or non-virulent. The S strain, put it in red here, can cause disease, and this is one to watch out for. In this case, it produces a polysaccharide coat, the glycocalyx, and can cause disease. Not all glycocalyxes or polysaccharides coats automatically cause disease. In this particular bacteria strain, it does. Here, the rough colonies, uh, they don't produce that uh, exterior coat, and therefore they're considered harmless, and they have this rough strain. So the experiment that was done, a uh, rough strain, non-virulent, purified that, injected it into a mouse, waited for a period of time, and the mouse was just fine. That smooth strain is virulent, that's one that causes disease. When that's injected into a mouse, sadly the mouse dies. However, if we take this smooth strain and we heat kill it, we put it in some boiling water, we see the denaturing, we see the proteins denature, we see the shape definitely changes, and we inject this heat killed smooth strain into the rat or mouse, and it ends up living. We've basically taken away the virulent strain for this. However, what's most interesting is that when we take a combination of the rough strain, which didn't cause disease, and the heat-killed smooth strain that didn't cause disease, and we mix them together, 
we developed a concoction here that was added to this mouse, and sadly this mouse ended up dying. So what we notice here is a little different. We have two portions that alone did not cause death, and most mouse lived in both those cases, but when combined, we notice that the mouse dies. A similar result to the smooth strain, virulent strain. However, what's caused here, or what's the potential reason for this, is that we're looking at these bacteria, these two different strains, can cause um, transformation to occur. The genetics from the heat kill smooth strain still exist, and they can be transferred and taken up by the rough strain, and these two can exchange material back and forth. And that's the key part here that's causing the mouse to die, causing a virulent end result. The Avery experiment was very interested in this particular um, experimental trial. They, he and his colleagues uh, prepared the same mixture of dead S and live R bacteria as Griffith did, then subject to various experiments. All the experiments revealed that the properties of the transferring principle resembled those of DNA. Remember, we're still trying to discover what the genetic material is. Uh, same chemistry and physical properties as DNA, not affected by lipid and protein extraction, not destroyed by protein or RNA di digesting enzymes, but destroyed by DNA digesting enzymes. So this kind of image shows a great um, visual representation of the AVA experiment. We'll look at that in the next slide. We see here, we have our mixture of the S strain bacteria. Remember, this is the smooth strain that's virulent, causes death. We added, or they added different um, enzymes. We recognize those by the last three letters, ACE. DNA, ACE, RNA, ACE, lipase, protease, and some other enzymes. Now, protease breaks down proteins. Lipase breaks down lipids or fats. RNA, ACE breaks down RNA, and DNA breaks, DNA, ACE breaks down DNA. When these were added to the different test tubes here and then added back to the R strain, tests were conducted. You can see here, in all of these cases, the mouse sadly ended up dying. However, when DNA ACE was added and broke down the DNA we mixed with the R strain, the mouse was alive. This is because these DNA ACE broke down the DNA and then allowed the mouse to survive because it took away the virulence of the S strain. One last experiment here. First, we need to understand just the basic structure of a virus. Virus is very simple uh, as a protein. Um, coat with DNA. So it's DNA wrapped in a protein coat. They can look very different, but the structure is basically the same. Some look like these kind of alien spider looking things. Some are more like a rod shaped. Some uh, might be more spherical. Uh, the key part is they all are a protein coat um, with DNA on the inside. Some also can be RNA. So this Hershey Chase experiment. Viruses um, that infect bacteria have a simple structure a DNA core surrounded by a protein coat. Hershey and Chase used two different radioactive isotopes to label the protein in DNA. They incubated the labeled viruses with host bacteria and revealed that only DNA entered the cell. Therefore, DNA was considered the genetic material. So there's an example of what they did. I'm going to flip to the next slide to give you a little bit more detailed look. So, the Hershey Chase experiment of 1952 two bacteriophages here. We have our two viruses. In this case, sulfur-labeled protein capsule. The outside here is labeled radioactively, just for tracking purposes. And here, the green is the DNA is labeled. They're both allowed to infect the cell, both allowed to kind of reproduce, and then at the end, through centrifuging, it's spinning, the bacteria cells were looked at. The ones that had, in this case, the sulfur-labeled uh, protein, the outer coat that was labeled, they noticed no kind of radioactive labeled materials in the actual cell. However, in this case, where the DNA was labeled and they purified the cells, they did notice the radioactive labeling present inside the cells. This is what provided them evidence that it wasn't the protein at all, and proteins were originally thought to be the source of genetic information because there's so many different proteins. DNA only has four different bases. They thought, no way could that be possible. Well, in fact, DNA was the genetic information. And by labeling the DNA in the viruses and only noticing that located here and not the protein outer shell, they concluded that DNA was the genetic material.